If you have TSP, then you probably got a notification in your email that TSP is going through major changes. And I just finished logging into their somewhat new website. And let me tell you about my experience so far. You have to create a new login and password even for the existing first or first employees. The initial login process was not as smooth as I thought, but I eventually got through it. They also sent out an email about the mutual fund window to allow us to choose and invest in more than 5,000 mutual funds. And I'm going to give you the full breakdown of the fees. If you're brand new to my channel, my name is Sai and welcome. So in this video, I'm going to go over the new TSP website just for a few minutes and then go over the new mutual fund window and see if they're worth investing in. There are some concerns about the mutual fund window from the U.S. Senate, and I'll talk about that in this video as well. Also, don't forget to check out my Grammarly affiliate link in the description below. Grammarly can proofread your writing and save you so much time and make your writing look professional. I've been using Grammarly Premium since 2018, and it saves me so much time from having to proofread my emails. I also use Grammarly to proofread my resume, which got me a job paying six figures in salary. You can get the free version of Grammarly and I will put my affiliate link in the description below. So I'm on TSP.gov and what you need to do is set up your new login. And this is for the new and existing TSP participants. You just have to fill out your basic information so you can find your TSP account. If you're both first and burst, you don't need to do this twice. And this is either your uh, guard or reserve and also a federal employee or you have two accounts for whatever reason they'll automatically link both of your tsp accounts during this process once you submit your information they're going to ask you to verify your identity and this step was so painful because the software tsp is running wouldn't recognize my driver's license and it's a real id from nevada after like five or six tries i got kicked out of tsp and had to start the process all over again I decided to use my passport instead to verify my identity and it worked the first time. And if you can't get through the step, then you'll have to contact TSP on the phone. The next step you need to do is set up your two-step authentication or answer security challenge questions. It's really up to you on how you want to set up your account. And this step was pretty self-explanatory. The next few steps are to verify your contact information, like your phone numbers and mailing address. And once you're done with the process, all you need to do is log in again from the home screen. And the next step I did was to lock my account. And this is to prevent anyone else from requesting a new loan or withdrawing money from my TSP. This step was pretty easy too. I just had to use a 10 digit key to lock my account. And also don't forget to update your beneficiary information because for some reason my beneficiaries weren't listed on there. And don't just put your primary beneficiary but put your contingent beneficiary in case something happens to both you and your spouse. Now, let's talk about the new mutual funds TSP says we'll be allowed to invest in the coming days. You can also get our free retirement calculator by visiting firesidechat.com contact. You can also check out the Fireside Chat shop and I have all of my stuff on my bookshelf at firesidechat.com shopping. So TSP is going to have over 5,000 mutual funds that you can choose from, but it's going to come with the cost. And let me briefly talk about the differences between actively managed mutual funds and index funds. An actively managed mutual fund is when there is a portfolio manager who actively manages your portfolio to try to beat the stock market's average returns by buying and selling short-term price fluctuations in the stock market. A passively managed mutual fund matches the performance of a specific market index as closely as possible. So the TSPC fund matches the S&P 500 index and the S fund matches the Dow Jones US completion total stock market index fund, but specifically in the small and medium cap US companies. The TSP mutual fund window most likely consists of actively managed mutual funds. So let me break down the cost and fees. For the mutual fund window, you'll be charged $55 for the annual administrative fee and $95 for the annual maintenance fee. And that's a total of $150 a year just for having the mutual fund window. There's also gonna be $28.75 per trade, as well as other fees and expenses, depending on the mutual fund that you choose. This is typically about a 1% expense ratio of the total amount you invest with the mutual fund. And you also need to have at least $40,000 in your TSP to be eligible to invest in the mutual fund window. Let me compare this 
with the TSP individual funds that I already own. My TSP consists of a 50% C fund and 50% S fund. And this is not financial advice. It's just how I prefer to invest my TSP. These are my index funds and they're really cheap to own, right? I'm gonna use the C fund for example, which is the S&P 500 index fund. The expense ratio is 0.043%. And what that means is if I have $40,000 in the C fund, TSP is going to charge me 0.043% or $17.20 every year for having this fund. This is a pretty industry standard for index funds because they're passively managed. It just mirrors the performances of the S&P 500 index. If you invest in the mutual fund window, you'll need a minimum of $10,000 for the initial investment because it can't be more than 25% of your total account in the mutual fund window. This is why you need at least $40,000 in your TSP because $10,000 would be at that 25% threshold. So if you decide to just invest $10,000 into the mutual fund, then you're going to be charged $28.75 for the trade. $95 for the annual maintenance fee and $55 for the administrative fee. The mutual fund itself will also charge you for uh, an additional expense ratio and that's typically around 1% of your investment amount. So if you invest $10,000, then they're gonna charge you $100 for having this specific mutual fund that you chose. And if you trade, let's say 12 times a year and invest an additional $30,000, that's $28.75 multiplied by 12, and that gives you $345, and you're looking at a total of $495 a year in fees, and plus the 1% hypothetical expense ratio at $400. That's a total of $895 in one year, and if I compare this to my C fund at a 0.043%, expense ratio the mutual fund window is outrageously more expensive than the tsp individual funds or the life cycle funds so why would someone like you or me invest in a mutual fund window that's more expensive in fees and to some investors it's not about the fees but it's about what the mutual funds hold some actively managed funds can beat the market over time even after their fees are paid nothing is guaranteed though right some investors like to invest in a mutual fund that only targets uh, certain sectors like tech growth stocks like Tesla, Meta, Nvidia, or Qualcomm. Some investors like to invest in a dividend paying mutual fund that holds stocks like Johnson & Johnson, Coca-Cola, Verizon, or oil stocks. And some investors like to invest in an ESG mutual fund, which stands for environmental, social, and governance, and it focuses on environmentally friendly and sustainable businesses as well as businesses that acknowledge climate change and donate to their local community so there are a lot of investors who are willing to pay more in fees to invest in something they believe in by the way if you need help with your tsp you can schedule a free one-on-one 20 minute financial coaching session by visiting fivesachat.com coaching personally i wish tsp had expanded its features to etfs and individual stocks I understand that they would have to create a self-directed brokerage account or SDBA like in the 401k and have another broker like TD Ameritrade, Fidelity or Schwab to manage ETFs and individual stocks for the investors. And just real quick, an SDBA is an option that certain employers allow you to invest outside the 401k core plan and invest in something like ETFs, mutual funds and individual stocks. It's basically a separate pot of money within your 401k. And I did the SDBA with my previous employer to invest in individual stocks. The TSP mutual fund window is kind of like the SDBA, but they're only allowing us to invest in the mutual funds. And I just, I never liked how restrictive 401k and TSP have always been because they only give us certain investment funds to choose from. And only about 40% of 401k retirement plans offer the SDBA option and only about 3% of participants actually use it. And if you're not an advanced investor, then you don't need to worry about the SDBA option. But what I'm trying to say is that TSP could offer this option to federal employees and military members if they partner with another broker like Fidelity, Schwab, and TD Ameritrade. And there's something else I'm a little concerned about the mutual fund is that people won't do their due diligence before picking a mutual fund Six U.S. Senators recently wrote letters to Federal Retirement Thrift Investment Board's acting chairman David Jones to urge them to remove the mutual fund window from TSP. The reason is that some of these mutual funds are investing in sanctioned or otherwise blacklisted Chinese companies 
that develop advanced weapons and systems and military modernization, these Chinese companies could be directly or indirectly contributing to the genocidal campaign against Uyghur by equipping concentration camps and trafficking in forced labor. I'm paraphrasing the letter here, but I will put the link in the description below. So Senators Rick Scott, Josh Hawley, Tom Cotton, Roger Marshall, uh, Rob Portman, and Marco Rubio all signed the letter. And they're all asking the FRTIB to cancel or at least postpone the imp implementation of the mutual fund window initiative until the mutual funds can be vetted fully. The last thing I want to do is have my retirement money go to a foreign government, and I'm sure everyone else would probably feel the same way. Am I going to move money to the mutual fund window? Probably not, but I will take a look at the list of the mutual funds TSP is going to be offering. And I've never been a fan of actively managed mutual funds because I think I will make more money with index funds in the long term without these high fees. And if you want to know more about how to invest with TSP, be sure to check out these two videos. So with that said, I appreciate you watching my video. Don't forget to subscribe and I hope to see you in the next video. Have a good one.